Hi students, so uh, let us continue our discussion on trigonometric functions. Uh, before that we discussed about the angles, its direction and measurement. Now we let us discuss about trigonometric functions. I hope you are aware of trigonometric ratios which you studied in your class 9 or 10. So trigonometric ratios are the measurement of the trigonometric functions by taking the ratios of the sides of a right angle triangle. So what we have learned in our class 9 and 10th standard is like this. So if I have a right angle triangle like A, B, C are the three vertices uh, of the right angle triangle and if this angle is theta then we know sin theta is equal to AC by BC cos theta is equal to AB by BC and tan theta is equal to AC divided by AB and the reciprocals of these three trigonometric ratios sin theta, cos theta, tan theta are cosec theta, sec theta and cot theta respectively. So that means we can write this as 1 by cosec theta that is equal to 1 by sec theta that is equal to 1 by cot theta. Here in trigonometric ratios one thing is the value of theta is always acute that means it can be from 0 degree to 90 degree. So the point is if we have to measure a sign of an angle which is more than 90 degree how we can do it. So trigonometric ratios cannot help directly to measure that one. That's why the point comes as trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions in that aspect is an extension of the trigonometric ratios where we can measure the value of trigonometric functions of any angle. For example, if someone asks you what is the value of sine 7 pi by 4, how you can find it? By means of trigonometric ratios, you cannot find it. But we are going to learn something now by which we will be able to measure the value of that sine 7 pi by 4 or like that. Clear? So, to discuss this thing, we need to, uh, you know, break the entire 360 degree into 4 quadrant. Up to 360 degree, the angle repeats, right? So, so till 360 degree, we are breaking into four different quadrants. What are the quadrants? Let's see. <coughs> So this is 0 degree or 0 radian you can say. Here it is pi by 2 radian which is 90 degree. This is pi radian which is 180 degree. Here it is 3 pi by 2 which is 270 degree. And here it is 0 degree. 0 degree or 0 radian again it is coming 2 pi or 360 degree <coughs> clear now between 0 and pi by 2 we are telling it as first quadrant so any angle between 0 to pi by 2 is known as first quadrant any angle between pi by 2 to pi is second quadrant any angle between pi to 3 pi by 2 is called third quadrant. 
and any angle between 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi is known as fourth quadrant. Clear? The point is <coughs> there is a convention. Any angle, any any angle which belongs to the first quadrant, all the trigonometric functions are positive. The value of all trigonometric functions are positive. So that means here all are positive. In the second quadrant, that means for any angle between pi by 2 to pi, only sine is positive. And obviously as sine is positive, 1 by cosec, which is sine is equal to 1 by cosec, so cosec will also be positive. Because a reciprocal of a positive number is always a positive number. So here sine is positive. In the third quadrant, between pi to 3 pi by 2, here tan is positive. What does it mean by tan is positive? Tan is positive means cot is also positive. But apart from tan and cot, all the other trigonometric functions are negative in this third quadrant. Apart from sine and cosec, all the trigonometric functions are negative in the second quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, here cos is positive. Fourth quadrant means 3 pi by 2, 2 pi. Here cos is positive. And as cos is positive, obviously sec is also positive. Apart from cos and sec, all the other trigonometric functions are negative in the fourth quadrant, that is, for any angle between 3 pi by 2 and 2 pi. Clear? Okay. So, what you understood, if we summarize, in the first quadrant, it is between 0, 2 pi by 2, and the second quadrant, it is between pi by 2 to pi and in the third quadrant between pi to 3 pi by 2 and in the fourth quadrant 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. So what we see in the first quadrant all are positive. Here we see all are positive. In the second quadrant between pi by 2 to pi sine is positive. In the third quadrant that is between pi to 3 by 2 is tan is positive. And in the fourth quadrant between 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi cos is positive. Usually this is known as all sine tan cos all sine tan cos this rule one interesting point is that in the first quadrant that is from any angle between 0 to pi by 2 all are positive and you know from your prior uh, knowledge of trigonometric ratios what you studied in your class 9 and 10 is that obviously yes because it is an acute angle, so for any acute angle, I can always construct a right angle triangle and I can measure the ratio of the sides which will always become positive. Alright? Now, if someone asks you, what is the value of cos 7 pi by 4? How you are going to find it? So, what you see is that 7 pi by 4, so the question here is that the value of cos 7 pi by 4. As I mentioned earlier, trigonometric ratios is not going to help you to find the answer. But whatever we have discussed, it will able to help us to find the answer. So 7 pi by 4 in which quadrant that we will find? 7 pi by 4 is in the quadrant of 3 pi by 2 plus something. Alright? So 7 pi by 4 means what? Cosh. 3 pi by 2 plus pi by 4. So that means after 3 pi by 2, we have to go to pi by 4. That means it is in this quadrant. And we know in this quadrant cos is positive. So we can directly say the value of cos 7 pi by 4 is positive. 
But what is the value? That we'll see after some time. Understood. So we can always say this is actually positive. That we always say. But if someone asks me what is the value of sine 7 pi by 4? Sine 7 pi by 4, 7 pi by 4 as we just uh, observed, it is in the fourth quadrant and in fourth quadrant sine is negative. So we can directly say the value of 7 pi by 4 is negative. Alright. So what I will suggest you spend some couple of minutes to understand how we are finding the sign of any trigonometric function sign means whether it is positive or negative of any trigonometric functions by means of the rule all sine tan cos please some spend some two minutes with it then you will go to the next topic called allied angles